Okay, so make this attempt number five in playing light chicken. <laughs> so, hey everyone, welcome to the Crazy Desert Knitting channel. This channel focuses on knitting, crocheting, and other yarn related topics. I am Mel, the Crazy Desert Knitter, coming to you from the Valley of Arizona. I should say the sunny Arizona. Sunny Arizona. Yeah, we're gonna go with it. To all my new viewers, welcome. To all my returning viewers, welcome back. I so appreciate you guys coming. Okay, I think that's everything. So as you guys can see, new location again. I was trying to show you guys the background and still keep enough light to film in. That's natural, but then not so much light that I get blown out and you can't actually see me because there's too much light. So it's a very, hang on a sec, gotta check on the dogs. Okay, we're good. <laughs> so it's a very precarious situation there. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah. So I don't have any finished objects for you. My Carmen lace coat from last time <laughs> is sitting to be blocked. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. So yeah, it needs to be blocked before I can sew down the arms, but I did bind it off. So hey, it is several days after the last time I've recorded. Who has an idea of when this one is actually going to go up? I don't know. But hey, I'm wearing my favorite Coca-Cola t-shirt. <laughs> so, okay, I really don't care. I just like the Coca-Cola bear at the bottom of it with the penguin. I just think he's cute. I don't know. That's just a random piece of information you guys didn't necessarily want to know. It is not knitting related at all. Okay. Uh, let's get into the knitting content. I thought today I would share with you, I guess, my project on my one remaining whip and then a little bit or a few of my inspirations lately and what I found inspiring lately. So let's get on to the whip. So I am doing the Moss Rib Socks by that come in Socktacular, which is a sock book from Knit Picks. You can find it from knitpicks.com or Amazon. Uh, both of them work. Okay, I really hope this shows up because I can't see anything on the screen. <laughs> so these are the moss rib socks. That's what they look like. Sorry, I'm gonna try to talk off to the side because I know that helps some people. I think you guys can see this, <laughs> who knows? I really thought I was super close to the camera last time. So I've tried to like move back a little bit. I hope this is a little better. So I did finish the first sock. So it is completely finished. You guys saw it when it was about here. I'm going to get my arm out of my face. You guys saw it when it was about here last time. I did put a progress keeper on it. It is a little cactus. <laughs> I know, so cute. So I finished it off. I did make a rounded toe or what will be a rounded toe by the time I get done. I will tell you, I forgot to <laughs> redistribute the stitches because I put more stitches on the top of the foot for the pattern piece than I did on the bottom of the foot. I forgot to redistribute. So we're gonna see, I may actually have to rip back the toe. But uh, let's be honest, I'm probably just too lazy to do that. Happens to me all the time. I also actually woven my ends at the top. I'm so excited. Yeah, I never do that. The second sock isn't very far. I, oh, and I stopped in the middle of a row. Great. So I've cast on. <laughs> this is literally what I've got, guys. Second sock, I'm like a row and a half into it, apparently. There's not much to see there. I am knitting these on Chiagu, Chaigu. I don't know how you pronounce them, but everybody knows what they are. They are a US 1.5 or a 2.2, a 2.5 millimeter needle. I did go up to a 1.5. I know a lot of people knit their socks at 1.5. I like a very dense sock, a very tight gauge to my sock. And so I remained with the 1.5, but I do have 72 stitches on here. I believe I made a mistake in my last coffee break in saying that the moss rib stitch pattern was four stitches. So I increased by two pattern repeats. It's eight stitches and I increased by one pattern repeat. I don't know what I was thinking. I, it had been a very long day. Let's just say that much. 
So that is literally it. That's all I've got. I am making this out of, I'm gonna hold up the bag again because getting the yarn out is not gonna happen. This, this is Dream in Colors Smushy Fingering Base. It is an 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. If you are looking for hard wearing socks, this will not be the base for you. It does not quite have enough nylon in it. However, it does make it for a very nice feeling on your tootsies, i.e. your toes. Uh, this is a one-of-a-kind skein, so there is no colorway name. And it lives in my single cake yarn sack. And if anybody wants to know where I got it, I took it out of my mom's sewing room. I don't know. I find a lot of things in there. It really works for me. <laughs> okay, so that is all of the current outstanding knitting I have. Like, I don't have much else. Uh, so I thought I would talk for a few seconds here about my knitting inspirations recently. I have been watching a few YouTubers and, you know, various other people. And watching others knit and experience yarn is typically what inspires me to knit. Uh, especially certain things. <laughs> and... I recently have gotten very into watching Jonathan Day's knits. I think it's, is it Jonathan Day or Jonathan Days? I don't know. Check out the description box below, which if you've gotten this far in the video, by the way, everything I'm talking about is in the description box below. There may not be a lot of editing to this video, but I do at least remember to put stuff down below. I will try to actually link to his YouTube channel. It's great. I really enjoy his episodes. He has this theory on or this philosophy not theory I must call it philosophy on knitting where garments no matter what they are are unisex and I think that's fabulous now we may prefer some colors to others and various people like various things but I, I just think that's a, a great outlook on things not to pigeonhole ourselves into things so I've been really inspired by him now i will tell you that a lot of the stuff that he's shown recently on his podcast or youtube channel or vlog whatever we're calling these things these days uh, <laughs> he i really want to knit for example the single malt everybody has heard of this pattern it's by max cry i don't know if i'm pronouncing his last name right again i'll Put a link in the description box below um, it is a beautiful pattern and i just sitting there i'm like okay i really want that and as it turns out so does my dad i was like oh man i gotta knit one for you first <laughs> oops who knows if it's actually gonna happen or not but hey i can try so he is one of my inspirations i really enjoy his variety of pattern types as well as his various yarn choices. He is definitely a bigger sock knitter than I am. I get, it's funny because I say that and I'm knitting a sock. <laughs> I might knit two pairs of socks a year, guys. I don't knit 12 or 15 pairs of socks a year. I just, I don't do that. But I will knit one or two. <laughs> so he is a much bigger sock knitter than I am, but I really enjoy some of the sweater patterns that he knits. Another very inspirational um, channel that I like to watch, I watch mostly YouTube channels, by the way, vlogs, is Inga from The Knitting Traditions, or Knitting Traditions. I think it's The Knitting Traditions, linked below. I find that her approach is of, give it a shot and let's see what works. And sometimes I'm gonna follow a pattern, but then sometimes I'm not, and her, the way she embraces rustic yarns is very beautiful to me. And I find that amazing. Rustic yarns are very hard for me to wear. Not because I find them scratchy or anything. I live in a desert. It's hot in a desert most times. They're not all that practical for me. Uh, but I do still get a lot of inspiration out of what she chooses to knit. I do also enjoy watching Chevy from Chevy Roll Stuff. She just has this 
personality that comes across and she chooses different colors and textures and patterns from some of the others that I've already mentioned. And so I really enjoy watching her. She's a very big positive person that is very much herself. And that is phenomenal to me. Wow, there's a bee. I didn't think they would have survived the cold quite as much. Okay, weird. Sorry, random. Uh, another one that I have recently found a lot of inspiration from is Somer Knits. And now Somer Knits, I enjoy watching for her patterns that she chooses. Her yarn colors are a little brighter than I normally go for, but that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy and gain inspiration from what it is that she creates. But something from her that I really get inspired by is she has this idea of usable art and I find that concept beautiful so they're trying to in their house they're trying to amass I guess I'm going to use the word a collection of handmade dinnerware plates bowls silverware cups things like that I think this is great because she calls it usable art and that to me is a fantastic idea. And it's something that I've been kind of thinking about recently. It's I don't need a lot of things as long as I enjoy the things that I do have. I have also very much enjoyed watching a lot of people's make nine videos for the year. <laughs> 100 Acre Wool's podcast. 100 Acre Wool. Like it's her podcast, sorry. <laughs> she did a make nine video that is really cool and I really enjoyed watching it and she actually had a lot of the yarn that she was going to use for a lot of these projects already and I enjoyed watching that it very much inspired me to you know look at some of those patterns a little bit differently so I found that really amazing now the the number one most inspiring thing to me in how I get inspired to knit is my local knitting group and I know that for some of us that still not isn't possible. I am lucky enough that I live in a place where we can sit outside and knit right now. And we can stay socially distanced still for the most part. And we've all been vaccinated and we take our proper precautions. And it's that's inspiring to me. Meeting with those individuals and seeing what they knit and how they knit and the knowledge that we pass to each other and how each one of us has a skill set that we excel at is really amazing to me. Everybody does something different. We have one woman who is a loom knitter and we have one who is, if she wanted to be, she could be a master knitter. Like it's, she is amazing. We all have problems with a pattern. We're like, we need help she's just awesome so those are things that you know sitting with those ladies and experiencing that on a pretty frequent basis for me is truly and sincerely amazing and inspiring because I get to see what they're knitting in person and feel the yarn that they're knitting I'm a very textural person so when I go into my local yarn store I have to touch everything <laughs> There are some yarn stores I found that don't like that. My local yarn store, she goes, go feel, go touch. Because if you don't touch it, how do you know you're going to like it? And that just is a, that's a great concept to me. I do the same thing in a fabric store. Not that I sew very often, but I do go into fabric stores for some reason. So I'm a very textural person and I have a very interesting way of looking at things like that. So... I think that's everything. So welcome and thank you guys so much for joining me. I don't know why I just said welcome. Very strange. Huh. For my second coffee break, I know these are a little new format. I know they're a little different. I hope you guys are enjoying them like I am. They're a little easier for me to accomplish on a semi-regular basis. Again, it's only been four or five days since I recorded last. Now, 
That being said, I have no idea how long it's going to take me to get this thing posted. Probably another three to four days. <laughs> so who knows? But it's been really nice uh, speaking with you guys again. I hope this was a little bit better of a distance. I feel it is. I don't feel like I'm on top of the camera <laughs> anymore, which is nice. So if you guys are looking for any names of yarns, patterns, any of the channels, uh, inspiration channels that I was talking about earlier, go ahead and check out that description box below. It's down there. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you guys would like to see more, go ahead and click that subscribe button. I would appreciate it. And until next time, thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.